Hey, what's going on, guys? How are you today? Fantastic. Fantastic. I'm just sitting here going through our water heater book thinking, man, uh, even though we just updated this four years ago, I think I think we're going to have to start updating again in the near future, Ty, because so many things have changed in our industry. And we have a lot of things to talk about. We've been talking about heat pump technology for quite a while. Now we need to move on a little bit and start talking about some other things that really are in our industry. So today we're joined by our good friend, Greg Holiday. Greg, how you doing? I am doing wonderful. Thank you so much for uh, bringing me on. Oh, this is gonna be a lot of fun. We've got Ty down in Texas. Ty, what's weather today? Hot, hot, and hot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I know that. It, Ty was saying that when the uh, hurricane came through, it actually brought the temperature down to, what, 99 for you? Yeah, it was great. Yeah, I don't, I don't even know that we've even got up to that. <laughs> so uh, It helped us in Kentucky, too. We got down into the, the mid-80s, which was good. Yeah, absolutely it is. So let's talk about innovations for a little while. And, oh, you know what? How about a dad joke when Matt, we're talking about innovations? Huh? Yeah? Yeah? KCR Dad Jokes. All right, Greg, what is the most important innovation? I know heat pump water heaters and water heaters are great innovations, but what is the most important innovation in the last 100 years? Wow. That is a tough one. For me, it would be a smoker that I can cook bacon on. Mmm, I like that. How about a dry erase board? Do you know why? Because it is the most remarkable. <laughs> Hello? Am I out there? <laughs> Todd, thanks for joining us from Southern California. I know you guys have probably got some nice weather down there. That's right, Perla. Thanks for joining us today. And anyone that has any dad jokes and even mom jokes that you would like to bring in for us to share, we like to have fun here on the show. So if you got some dad jokes, I'm going to throw that QR into the, co into the uh, chat. And I'm also going to throw in the mom codes. Those are uh, jot forms. So Love to have anybody submit some of those and we'll share them along the way. And make sure to let us know in the chat where you're joining from and if you have any questions so we can bring you into the show and we can uh, dive deeper into some of these topics and answer some questions. So Greg, we're so grateful that you're joining us today. Bradford White has been in the industry for a very, very long time and that was at the forefront of our heat pump water heaters. And there's a lot going on in the heat pump water heater industry right now. Yes, there is. The industry is changing and expanding in a big part because of uh, what the government is doing, uh, making these products to be mandatory for any product, any water heater, electric water heater built over 35 gallons in just five years. That crazy. It's really turned a lot of heads. Yeah, that's the thing that we get a lot from the industry is that, you know, we have these changes coming. People are going, well, why are we talking about heat pump water heaters? for HVAC. Uh, well, we're gonna get into that here in a little bit because we're, we are the people that will be working on heat pump water heaters and we're actually gonna be required in many instances because these are some of these are actually very serviceable components. So Paul, thanks for joining us today. All right, let's dive deeper into this and let, let's get into heat pump water heaters and best practices because many of us HVAC and refrigeration technicians are not real comfortable with the whole plumbing side, the water heater side of things? Well, I've always said when we came out with these products and I was at GE for 32 years, that it's as much an HVAC product as it is a water heating product mm -hmm. because it's a heat pump. It is. And it's a heat pump that everybody understands and knows, which was why GE was so qualified to bring this out as the first ever Energy Star product. And then later private label it for Bradford White before Bradford White bought the GE plant and hired me away uh, to move that product up into Michigan to be the only American company that builds one in the United States. These are the same components that are in a refrigerator and GE yeah. had practice building, oh, just a few million of those that everyone has in their house, one, two, three. Some of you've got one in the garage that's probably 20, 25 years old with the beer and the soft drinks in it. Yep. And I'll always ask how many times has that been serviced? And the answer is zero because yeah. it is so reliable. So 
being able to bring this to the HVAC trade is huge because we have the only heat pump water heater that is 100% serviceable, including the sealed system. Yeah, okay. let that soak in for a minute. You got you guys have got service written on your truck and yeah. every other manufacturer says, we can't let you fix that. You have to scrap it and take it to the landfill, which is not a good idea. No, and that's given some of the heat pump water heaters a bad rep because if there is any kind of a problem in that sealed system, that has been the practice is to completely remove the entire assembly. And as we start looking at our products, it's very important to understand that we have a refrigeration circuit on these water heaters that falls right into the R of HVACR. I remind homeowners all the time of that, that you know HVAC contractors don't go out to the yard and cut the unit if a sealed system problem occurs and it's got a bad compressor. Put it on a trailer and take it back to the distributor and get another one. You fix it because fixing it means something to the homeowner. It helps build their confidence rather than saying, we give up on this and we got to put a whole new unit in. This is a means of giving you access to this customer's home and building confidence for 10 years guaranteed because that's what the warranty is. Right. 10 years where we provide all of the uh, product parts and pieces that you might need through our 24 seven uh, technical assistance line. We're the only manufacturer that's always open to help you to provide you with parts, teach you how to repair it, walk you through diagnostics, do everything you need to know to be able to make a, a valid repair on that. And it's less expensive to generally fix than it is to replace. That's a very, very good point. For those that are looking for additional resources for Bradford White, you've got the web address at the bottom. If you scan that QR code, it'll actually take you right on over to the site as well. So I'll leave that in the chat for everybody as we go along. I mentioned earlier that you know this goes back to 2009. And it all began because of Energy Star, which goes way back to 1992. And what were their goals back then? Greenhouse gas reduction is a lot that of people the don't realize that. we're hearing today. So it's the same thing. HVAC products, your industry was affected by this in 1995 because mm -hmm. Energy Star went to the highest energy user in the home, which is HVAC product, and said, Can you make something yes. more efficient? And that industry said, yes, we can. And in just a few short years, released the first Energy Star rated product. Now, that bar gets raised every three, four years. Seems like it's always moving up. So the SEER ratings that you're seeing today were unheard of. Look at the water heating industry. Yeah, absolutely. Third, the second highest energy user in the home got challenged and the industry said, we can't make anything any better until GE comes along and says, what if we adapt the heat pump from a refrigerator to a tank, an electric tank, two of the most reliable products in the country when it comes to water heating and, and things that you do in your home to refrigerate. Let's put those two things together. And what it did is it changed the, the whole idea of water heating because every water heater that's ever been created up until now is less than 100% efficient. And all of a sudden water heaters got to 200% efficient. Now we're up as high as 400% efficient. Mm, you guys know what that means. Yeah. That means for every dollar you spend, if you're getting between three and four dollars in actual hot water, it pays for itself. That's a COP of four. And we're going to be talking about that a lot going forward, what that coefficient of performance is. When we start talking about transferring of heat, which is what we're doing with the heat pump, we're talking about for every watt of energy, we're going to be able to move multiple watts of heat, right? So we have 3.412 exactly. BTUs per watt or so. If we were talking about electric resistive heat, we're talking about every watt of electricity, we're gonna get 3.412 BTUs, we're gonna get one watt of heat. Now with our heat pump, we can exceed that one watt by multiples, which is why we've moved into this coefficient of performance because we are more than 100%. A lot of people go, how can it be 400% efficient? Well, exactly like you're saying, we are moving four times the units of heat as what we would do if it was a traditional heating element. That is exactly right. And that is really the big picture focus on this is it's not a matter of our states or is the government going to require everybody to use it. Uh, my best expression is sometimes everybody gets lucky. And in this case, the government and different states have gotten lucky by mandating something that is actually the best thing that you could have out there. 
every now and then you get lucky on something like that. So anybody that hears the story of this and sees the big picture of efficiency equals payback when it gets above 100 percent efficient and no water heater has ever done that. UEF is the rating system for heat pump for all water heaters. Mm -hmm. uh, and the Department of Energy does that when they rate a water heater by putting it in a 68 degree ambient temperature room with 57 degree water and simulate the water draws of a typical home based on a low, medium or high usage pattern. And at the end of 24 hours, it's how much energy did you use and how much hot water did you produce? And a typical gas water heater comes in at about a 0.60. That means I lose 40 cents of every dollar I spend to heat water on an atmospheric gas water heater. So folks say, well, I want to move up to a tankless. Tankless will cause you to lose less, but they start at a 0.82 and top out at a 0.97. That means even on the best, most expensive, you're still going to lose three cents. So what's the payback? The 12th of never. Hmm. Now you get to an electric water heater, it's a 0.93. That's because the elements are in the tank. You don't have to deal with any heat loss, but a heat pump water heater says, I'm somewhere between a 3.0 and a 4.0. That is huge because it created the first ever payback story, but bigger than that, it created the first ever proactive replacement story. Think about it. Every house you walk into, which is 50% of American homes that have electric water heaters, is an opportunity to help somebody save three to four hundred dollars a year on their electric bill by taking one tank out and putting another tank in that produces exactly the same volume of hot water with the same first hour rating yet it puts three to four hundred dollars in their pocket guaranteed for the next 10 years and beyond it doesn't mean these expire at that point it just means that's the guaranteed life that you can do the math on and show payback for a homeowner wow. so Markets yeah. are changing and that's that's happening right it now. Is. I'm electric here. I'm just straight electric on a four-year-old home. Ty, what kind of water heating are you using? Electric. So oh. I just, yeah, I mean, right here, prime examples. You know, we are the type of people looking at these opportunities going, man, this, this really makes a lot of sense for us as educators. And so why wouldn't I want to do this in my classroom, start teaching these new technologies and innovations? I just recorded a podcast today with a manager at a local energy co-op, and the conversation was about the incentives that are happening through the energy co-ops to encourage people to go with heat pump water heaters. And I said, aren't you in the business of selling electricity? He said, we get that all the time. He said, more than anything, we're in the business of managing energy. And the best way we can do that is to provide our customers with products that will use less energy, which will put money in their pocket. And that way they're not paying for the infrastructure to continue at the aggressive rate that we have with these inefficient products. I went, wow, that makes a lot of sense. So Todd, even you out in California, you can relook at these going, you know, hmm, maybe gas is not the way to go when I've got the opportunity to go with a high efficiency heat pump. Heck, he could put his out in the backyard. I wish I could. <laughs> the grid is definitely challenged right now and it has been for a long time. You know, most utilities operate where in the afternoons they need to they need to do something to shed load because they can't keep yes. up when it's uh, 100 degrees in Texas and everybody's AC units are running as hard as they can. So they come up with creative ways to try to shut things off and bring things on. Well, this was created for the 50 percent of American homes that have electric water heaters. It sheds 3000 kilowatt hours a year just by putting it into the house. The effect that that can have on the grid if the majority or even a large percentage of electric homes out there today made this very logical switch to pay for itself through energy savings, think about what it would do for the grid. It is a load control program in and of itself. Hmm. Now, this shows, it's always like this visual because people understand above the line and below the line. Right. This simply shows that, that whole perspective of what do you want to do with your money? Do you want to proactively take out your water heater today? You guys, regardless of how old it is, if you're losing $350, $400, $450 a year, depending on the size of the tank you have, why would you continue to give that to the power company when that could be diverted to pay for this new water heater to go in your house? 
And then you do the math that says if I spend this much and I get this much in a rebate and I get a 30 percent federal tax credit up yeah. to two thousand dollars of the installed cost, not just the product, the installed cost. Right. How fast will I get my money back? And it's typically three, four years, maybe five on the outside, depending on your situation and what you're having to do. But it was designed again for that half of the country. Now, other states have come in like California and say, gosh, we're 93 percent gas. We want this because we want to decarbonize the state. So that's changed the picture where a lot of people get shifted sometimes on the conversation that says, how hard is it to replace a gas water heater? Well, that can be hard because in those cases, now you've got to run a 220 line where you don't have one. And that that adds a lot, especially if you don't have a 200 amp box or any 30 amp service in there that is not being used. Because when this thing runs, it has two ways of being able to heat. It says that my primary defense, when you start to take a shower in the morning and cold water goes in one side of the dip of the, of the dip tube on the top and hot water goes out on the other side, it says, let's bring the heat pump on because I don't know how far you're going to go. I'm not going to presuppose that you're going to empty this tank and you need a fast recovery. Let's just begin recovery. So a 550 watt draw is on that compressor. That's it, five and a half 100 watt light bulbs. And it says, I'm going to pull warm air in through the top pass that through the evaporator so that it can absorb some of that heat in the 134A refrigerant. It then compresses that gas. You've got super hot uh, condenser line now on the outside of the tank that says, look at here, I can, if I can get it to come up, there we go. I'm gonna transfer the heat by pushing the hottest part of that gas to the bottom of the tank where the cold water is coming in from the dip tube. We got a couple of proprietary jumps that we make there in that wrap. And we also leave the standard electric heating elements in. That means that for the first shower, the heat pump is recovering the whole time you're in. If that's all you take, then the heat pump says, I can recover everything, taking that tank all the way to 140 degrees just by moving heat. But if Junior gets in next and says, I'm 12 years old and my job in life every day is to use every drop of hot water <laughs> there is. Right, and the right. water heater says, I'm monitoring five data points. I'm running an algorithm to decide when and if I need to add a heating element. And Junior, you have pushed me to my limit. So what am I going to do? I'm going to add the upper heating element. Yeah. Question now, just came in or a comment from Todd. That's exactly where we're at. You know, it would at 550 watts, it's going to take a lot of time, but that's stage one, right, Ty? Yes. So here's a here's a heating system in stage one, low capacity, 550 watts. And then as we meet our droop from the control, we're actually going to bring on stage two, which is now a 4,000 watt heating element. So in comparison, I guess, to a traditional... 40 gallon electric water heater. What kind of wattage does a traditional 40 gallon electric water heater use? 4,500 watts. That's why we can say the recovery yeah. is the same. The first hour rating is the same because the only time you're concerned about a fast recovery is when you have no hot water. Yeah, yeah. The standard electric water heater says, even if you just use 10 gallons, my only response is 4,500 watts of power. So, you know, some people can leave their water heater in heat pump only just depends on your situation. Uh, others will leave it in the hybrid mode, which is where it's Energy Star tested. And when I say that, that's what these energy guides are based on. An energy guide for a standard electric water heater says, all I have is a 4,500 watt heating element. This is the same equivalent in a 50 gallon heat pump water heater that says I've got both a 4,000 watt and a 550 watt compressor that can draw power to heat this tank. Look at the difference in the operating cost. Yeah, That's a big number when you can save $362 a year. Look at the comparison even down here with gas, $325. What's happening to the cost of natural gas now that there's so much focus on decarbonization? Which way is it going? It's going up. So yeah. those numbers are going to get worse as the gas infrastructure still has to be provided for, whether you're selling a lot of your product or a little bit of your product. Even a comparison with tankless, which is the hardest one to compare to, you never run out of hot water there. So it is an adjustment. But this is where proper sizing comes into play. Mm -hmm. Properly sized water heater in any house should rarely run out of capacity. 
Christmas, Thanksgiving, or in Kentucky deer hunting season, if deer hunters actually took showers, maybe that would be true. <laughs> you need hot water for other purposes, though. So, <laughs> so properly sizing a tank says I should rarely run out, but even with that in mind, you can go from hybrid mode on a Bradford White Aerotherm to hybrid plus that says it's Christmas time. I want to modify that algorithm. I want it to respond faster when it senses water and temperature changing in the tank using those five data points. And uh, then I want it to be able to add the upper heating element, but I really want it to go to the lower heating element so I can deep heat the tank. But if it still senses with that top sensor that water is being used in a shower, and it has a shot at trying to keep up with that, then it switches to the upper heating element. So it's a very smart water heater. All of these explanations of the five operating modes are listed right on the side of the water heater where anybody can stand there and read and say, electric only, yeah, that's not really where I wanna go. Hybrid mode, that's where it's energy star tested, it can use both technologies. Hybrid plus says that it's gonna modify it and it's gonna recover faster. So you have the ability to make those decisions yourself as a homeowner. But properly sizing is critical for any of these. And it's different sizing. If you've only had access to electric or gas water heaters in your market, and now you're putting in an electric, there's two different sizing charts that you follow. Because hmm. gas water heaters are not bound by having a 30 amp service providing to it. They're just putting out a 40,000 BTU blowtorch and a, that blowtorch can almost keep up with most showers. So you have to learn how to educate yourself. And we do make this easy for contractors. We've got a For the Pro website for Bradford White. If you just go to forthepro.bradfordwhite.com, uh, you'll be able to download and you go to the app store to download a For the Pro app for your phone where you can do the sizing right there. And sizing is not complicated. It's about going to our app, going to the website, choosing the right spec sizing tool, entering in the number of bathrooms, number of bedrooms, uh, any special things that are going on in the shower, whether it's a large garden tub or just a normal shower. Uh, and then anything would be special in that shower, like maybe multiple shower heads. And it will do the calculation when you put in the washing machines and the dishwasher just to make sure. And it says, we can now calculate what this is and spit out a report that's professional grade to wow. be able to present to a homeowner. And, and look at that. It actually I mean, shows, it, it shows the percentage of what it's going to cover. And that way, when you're presenting to a homeowner, you can say, let's have a conversation about your hot water usage and how many people are in the house. And do you have frequent extra guests? Because if I'm covering it a little over 100%, that's my fudge factor. And I may need to step up to another size tank. So we're going to give you size recommendations until you get to a size recommendation that says, you know, 120, 130%, I can absorb some extra showers Christmas and Thanksgiving. And the contractor is able to present that to the homeowner, just like the HVAC industry does with upgrades and say, let's do what makes sense for your house. Yeah. Some realistic capacity comparisons. Exactly. Now, there are things that you do with this as well, not just sizing, but some houses, either you guys got a mixing valve on your water heater. I do not, but I need one badly. What about a recirculation pump? No, I need it even more. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it takes two minutes to get hot water upstairs. It's horrible. I put, a, I put this exact system I'm showing you here in my house because I wanted to test somebody's out there and act as a company in California that I was out working with the uh, builder show out there. And as a result of them hearing me tell contractors, you have to have a smart recirculating system, not one that just runs all the time, but one that says when I need a shower in the morning, I push a button and it recircles the line, dumps the water back into the tank to reheat versus a system that says we're going to maintain 100 degrees, 110 degrees, whether you're home or not, whether you're up or not or one that says every hour we're going to ding that. That makes any water heater run too much. And the name yeah. of the game here is to have hot water when you need it. So this system comes with Bluetooth. I've got uh, four bathrooms in my house, but the furthest one's got a Bluetooth button right uh, on the cabinet next to the throne in the morning. So anybody that sits down can push a button and say, hmm, got hot water up here. Less than 30 seconds, it's running 70 feet in my house and creating. My wife thanks me every week for this. I'm sure. They told me that was what was going to happen. 
Mixing valves, another thing. If you're in a house, especially larger homes, in fact, California requires this because they're switching from gas to electric water heaters. Yes. A mixing valve says now you can dial the tank all the way up to 140 degrees and mix it down to a safe temperature to be delivered to the homeowner. And that way the water heater acts like a larger tank than it really is because you use less of hotter water. And then of course, properly charged expansion tanks. Those should be used in every house. If you don't have one, get ready because the water companies for the last 10, 15 years have been going to meters and putting a uh, anti-backflow valve in a one way that says water can go into your home, but when water heats and it expands, it normally had a little ebb and flow back out into the main. Right now it won't, Longer. and you're going to have a closed loop system. So a, an expansion tank is what you need to be able to solve that. Have Love you got that. one? I have a small expansion tank. Yes. Good job. Good job. That protects everything in the house. So, so where do you put these? Where's your water heater in your yeah. house? So it's actually in the garage. Great place for a water heater, especially a heat pump water heater because garages get real hot in the summertime, hotter than the 68 degrees. And because your water heater is in the garage, that means it's obviously not getting to freezing temperatures or your current water lines and tank would freeze. Heat pump water heater like mine says, all I need is 35 degrees or higher. Just like the heat pump that's outside, it can operate at 35, 40 degrees. Is the efficiency the same? No, but it still can respond and do that and add the elements if necessary. Now, if a few times a year the temperature drops overnight because of some unexpected weather pattern, what does it do? It switches to standard electric mode and oh. it still keeps the tank heated. So, yeah. It's garage. Sounds like a heat pump to me, doesn't it? To you, Ty? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of similarities, yeah. but they can still be used in the house and they can still be used in the in the basement. Now, I know a lot of you out there are saying, Greg, if you're taking heat from the house. Yeah. How we an HVAC it. guy, I got to replace it back again. Are you really saving me anything? Now, all I will ask you is to consider where your water heater is located, because 99 times out of 100 are not taking heat that you're actively putting in the home. In a basement, we're taking heat that was supplied by the fact that that water heater sitting in that basement next to the HVAC system is eight feet underground. That's free heat. That's a basement that if you walk into it today, even though it might be 100 degrees somewhere, it's the coolest part of the house because right. the ground is pushing that heat in. When a heat pump water heater runs, it will make about a 700 cubic foot space, cubic foot, not square feet, cubic foot space, a 10 by 10 by seven, three to five degrees cooler when it runs. And you guys know that when you turn off an air conditioner in a house, how long does it take for the temperature to get bad and go back to where it's supposed to be? Minutes, doesn't take long at all. You notice and feel it. Same thing for this. It has such a small effect that it doesn't typically have to be vented anywhere because mm -hmm. you're not affecting the performance of the home unless it's upstairs in a closet across from the thermostat and that cool air is blowing through a louver door that touches that thermostat and makes it run. All right. Yeah, in our closet, right? Right beside our bedroom. That's okay. where yours is. Yep. What kind of builder did that? Well, we, we, we literally live in a barn that we, uh, that we enclosed off. So <laughs> it was me and my cousins. You did my that. Dad. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was just temporary. Sound is the only other thing that people ask about, and all heat pump water heaters are below 50 decibels. Okay, that's good um, enough. Dish, dishwasher in your house is 50 or higher if it's mm -hmm. very old, 50 or lower if it's very new. So it's a, it's a fan noise, essentially. You guys know what a compressor and a fan can sound oh, like, but it's not like that big fan that's outside. This is small. So the, if you're not used to hearing anything and it's very quiet at night and my wife has a fan running in the room that sounds like a jet engine because she likes to hear that noise versus anything else on the farm that might be barking, howling, or trying to get in. So <laughs> I you typically, get typically don't hear it, and it doesn't interfere with any of that as well. Hmm. So we're looking at a minimum 700 cubic feet for installation spaces for them. And that is true of every manufacturer, 700 cubic feet of air because that's the way their energy star tested. Now, if you read of a manufacturer that says you can use it for less, just know 
that that means the efficiency drops as well. True. Because if it doesn't yeah. have the same volume of air, then it's going to cost more for that water heater to operate. And that's where you get into the installation instructions. And I'm going to encourage you, you guys probably do more of this than some plumbing contractors do. Read the instructions for once in your life. One time, go through this book because it is very well written and you have no experience putting a heat pump water heater in. So you got to learn this up front. So we do make it easy. There's a QR code on the front of the water heater. That yellow piece of paper hangs on the front where you can click and get reminders. But I would encourage you to go through the book. I've cut a few pages okay. out of here to show what the space requirements are around the water heater because it okay. needs one. It needs space because people are of a different girth when they have to slide in beside one to work on it. And we did some testing with GE technicians and found out that seven inches was the minimum that they could suck in, hold their breath and reach in and strain to take something apart without falling on the floor. So you, you got to give that space. Now, right. There are some situations in a replacement market where you have to use that zero clearance and you can put these up against the wall, but just know that that means that if you ever have to service it and you covered up screws, just like on an HVAC product that you can't take out because it's installed, you might get to uninstall one. So think about that. Don't lose the sale, but think about if you have space, don't just push one against the wall just because you can. Right. And then knowing that this water heater has a condensate drain on it, just like an HVAC Absolutely. product, yeah. non-acidic water, they can be tied together because they're often in that same space where it just makes sense to take make those things happen just like that. And then knowing that when this turns on, it actually goes through a 22 minute startup procedure. And it's a part of that is a dry fire. We're going to make sure that you remember to turn that important knob on the top that says let's fill the tank because if you don't on an electric water heater those two heating elements come on and instantly pop and curl oh, they feel really nice i might have heard somebody that that's what happens so we turn the heat pump on first if air is in the tank the heat pump's going to heat up the inside of that tank and we're going to say that's too fast yeah something's wrong and it's going to beep and blink and put a fault code in the display nice. and then when you lean in to look at it it's going to smack you in the head and say turn the water on huh. all right got to make sure that but that's the stuff you'll find in the book and then frequently asked questions you got to know enough about these to be able to answer questions for the homeowner Absolutely. start with the list that's in the book and then learn more from me by going through a very specific installation training that I can put you through and get you certified on the Energy Star website so that you know the answers without even having to look and explaining the mode. And then just like HVAC products, there's fault codes in this that lead us down the path for service. So we know if it's a sealed system problem by the fault code. We can walk you through all of these fault codes that are on there. It's far more than this. I just put one of the pages up sure. because it's very precise in being able to help with diagnostics. Now, the beauty of this is, is I want you to be able to call us before you go out because we want you to be a rock star knowing what's wrong with a heater and not going out if you don't need to just yet. Because remember, this has two heating sources. If anything happens to the heat pump, what's it do? Switches to electric heat. Here. Anything happens with the electric side, it switches to heat pump. So the emergency service call is rare. So when you call, when you find out and a homeowner calls and says, hey, this water heater is beeping and blinking and it's got F blah, blah, blah on the display. All we need is the model number and the serial number, which you probably have in your records. If not, mm -hmm. ask the homeowner to snap a picture of that rating plate and then write the fault codes down and tell them. Let me make a phone call and I'm going to let you know if we need to come out today or if we're going to wait until we get parts. You call us because we're the only water heater manufacturer that never closes 24 seven. And you say, Bradford White, here's what I have, model and serial number, here's the fault code. We're gonna say, hey, maybe that's a fan motor. It sounds like it's not moving the way it's supposed to. Let us proactively send you one. We're gonna teach you how to put it in the diagnostic mode when you go out to the house to verify. And if it is the fan, replace it right there. One service call is the goal for that. And is that the 800-531-2111? Uh, well, we've got we've actually got two numbers that we broadcast. One of them is is in the book uh, and on, they're on the water heater as well. Um, but I want you to be able to have both of those. 
Mm -hmm. And one phone number is 800-334-3393. That's our 24-7 tech support. And then we also have 888-443-4394, which is a dedicated heat pump water heater line that's open until 7 o'clock at night. So they get you to the front of the line with somebody that that's all they do is talk about heat pump water heaters. You don't have to wait with anybody else that might be on calling about any other product that we make. Excellent. Fantastic. You know, Appreciate we that. Pro we provide stellar service for you guys as contractors. Remember, we're one of only two manufacturers that do not sell in retail. Everything we do is based on the, the relationship that we have with our suppliers, the Ferguson's, the Hajokas, the all of those of uh, the Ari Michaels of the world and selling directly to you through them. So we have no retail conflicts that we have to deal with and everybody else seems to. Fantastic. Yeah. Spacing, you know, mm -hmm. can you put it up against a wall? Yes. But follow the instructions that we provide for that and do it with your eyes wide open knowing that you don't want to lose a sale if it's a cramped space, because some of these are replacing water heaters that were put in odd places. So as a result of that, just look in the book and follow the instructions. And just so you can see, this is a comparison between manufacturers. Now, since I put this, this slide was put together, A.O. Smith has now created a top connection on their water heater. Because I had the only top connection water heater in the entire country. And that's a big deal considering almost every water heater you're going to replace has Top connections. Yeah, absolutely. It's easier to take one out and put one in when that's all you've got. And I mentioned the service and support. We got a little ahead of ourselves on that one. These are the numbers there where everybody can see it. Pull your camera out and take a nice picture of that because we want to be able to help you make the repair with your eyes wide open, knowing what you're capable of doing. And with this being the only sealed system repaired water heater, you hate to see a pinhole leak someplace and have to scrap a whole water heater because my competitors will tell you, you go out there and you check it, you find out by, while you're standing there that it's got a sealed system problem. Then you have to call the manufacturer if they're open and you have to tell them what's going on. And then they have to authorize, giving you a return authorization. You got to take the water heater out, take it back to the distributor, pick up another one, take it out, put it in. You might need to get help to get that 80 gallon out of somebody's basement. Now you're a half day into a job. Labor is covered for one year on all of these. What's that labor bill going to look like three years from now, four years from now, if a problem occurs? And that's all you're sliding across the table on a piece of paper. And they say, I thought this was free. Well, the water heater is, but my labor and time is worth something as it is, is right. We just want to make it as fair for you and for the homeowner as possible. There we go. Now, I would be remiss if I did not give you the advantages of my product as well. Uh, we, we talked about service already, and I'm going to flip one more slide. These are the advantages that Bradford White truly does bring to the table. We've got a water heater that is built in the United States. Nobody else builds one in this country. You know, when GE decided to get out of the water heating business back in 2017, uh, they told me and they told uh, Bradford White what was going to happen. And I could have stayed with the company. You know, I'd be 40 years at GE now if that hadn't happened. And I thought that's where I was going to end up. And I believed so much in this product that I said, give me some time. And they didn't pressure me at all in any way. I love that company. Um, Bradford White decided to hire me. And then six weeks later, went back and bought the GE plant. So I got to keep doing the same job that I was doing, working for a water heater manufacturer now, which was a very proud day. We talked about the other exclusives, Microban, antimicrobial finish. Microban is a coating company that exists in California. They've been around for over 30 years. Absolutely. This became very, very important in COVID. We were already in conversations with them. We were already doing some testing to see how that would bake into our first class uh, tank linings that we do that are vitroglass, best in the industry. And when COVID came along, it sped things up a little bit. We signed an exclusive agreement with them. You will find this nowhere else on any water heater, but you will find it in dishwashers. You will find it in laundry equipment. You'll find it on doorknobs being used in oh, yeah. houses. 
You'll find that on air filtration systems. You're putting those in. How many of those have the word microband for those panels that that air is bouncing off of? Absolutely. Now you can offer that to the homeowner as well. We've got the rigid top connections we talked about. We don't sell in retail. It's fully repairable. It can be laid down for transportation. You will not find that writing on anybody else's box. You lay it down on the back. It says it. Lay down this side. The arrows point up and they point sideways to indicate that you can lay it down. The other three sides show down, you know, laying, or I'm sorry, standing up only. And when you do that, you don't have to worry about oil moving and causing a problem because of the way you're laying it down. It can be taken immediately into the house and set up. Talk a little bit about our dedicated heat pump water heater line and our 24 seven. And these water heaters do also communicate. They do communicate through an app we actually have a connected device that's different from everybody else because everybody else chose to build this in. We decided to make it an accessory so that it's backward compatible with any Bradford White Aerotherm heater that is in oh, the right. market. Very nice. This is where the utility says we want this slot to be able to slide a radio module in to talk to the water heater with the homeowner if they will allow us. So this connects to Wi-Fi. The homeowner is able to see and, and understand their energy usage. They're able to change any of the settings. They can put it in vacation mode from the airport for up to 99 days, and it automatically switches back to hybrid mode the day before they come home. All of that is capable for the homeowner, but this device, we notice something. Most people don't have great Wi-Fi in their garage. How's yours in your garage? Well, I broadcast yeah. in mine, so I've actually got mine marked. You're doing great then. <laughs> this can be placed up to 100 feet away. It oh, uses okay. a simple Cat5 wire sure. that plugs in with a phone jack into the front of the water heater and also in this. And this is the only one in the industry that can be moved somewhere else rather than having to improve the Wi-Fi. You just simply relocate that box uh, if it doesn't work. So, you know, anybody can pull their phone out and see what the Wi-Fi looks like when they're out in the garage or in the basement, wherever it is, and move this around if they need to to establish a better connection. You know, Greg, one of the comments came in a while ago. I think you got Todd very excited about this. He's going to be getting away from his gas water heater here in a little bit. In California, Eugene Silverstein was telling us about this. When he was living in California, he had five different utility prices per day, right? So is there a way that we can do lockouts for like any particular times of the day when utility costs are the highest to make sure that it stays in heat pump mode and doesn't transfer over to the electric resistive elements? Absolutely. In fact, California is the only state that requires the communication device to be with the water heater oh. because they're trying to build their network in a way where they can control the water heaters. They're not doing it yet, yeah, right. but time of use rates are automatically programmed in upon installation. Huh. Now, if the utilities broadcast that, what that rate is. There's a website that we actually can, at some point, we'll be able to send a signal to, to be able to pull those numbers down and automatically load it in the water heater as that further develops. But for right now, you can create on your phone with that app as many of those programs as you want. Oh, so fantastic. the suggestion I've always had, and I've always told utilities, you really don't need to load control this and turn it off. Just put it in heat pump only mode during that peak time. Give the homeowner the option of still having a recovery mode, even if it takes longer, it's still better to have it recovering than to just sit there. Oh, yeah. Now, the insulation on these tanks is two, a little over two inches thick. It's, it's an R19 energy blanket, so it does only lose five degrees in 10 hours. But in California, you can program it to say on Monday, Wednesday and Friday when I'm home and the rate is this much, I want it to either turn off or go to heat pump only or I want it to recharge at night if they've actually got lower rates at midnight. And exactly. lots of utilities publish that data. You can put an, as many of those programs in on this as that you would desire to do. Man, that is fantastic. One of the things that you and I had talked about a few days ago when we were talking about this show was size comparison. So when we're doing tank replacements, very important to hop on the app and do a uh, do an actual calculation. Is there rules of thumb when we're looking at tank replacements? Well, in general, and again, this is not taking into account anything special that you might find in a house. If somebody was just sizing for my house, I got a four bedroom house, but there's only two of us in it. You size it to the house, not the number of people, because these folks could leave next year 
And then there's an inadequately sized water heater that's sitting there. So always want to make sure that you're sizing it for that. In general, a 50 gallon is going to carry four people you know, somewhere around that in the house. Now, other people may have had electric water heaters and were more disciplined with their shower heads. I, I wasn't. I live on a farm. I got four showers. I wanted them all to be able to blow out. So I took out those water savers years ago. I got five gallons a minute coming out of my shower heads. If I need it, you just open it up and it'll take the paint off your back if you got any there. So <laughs> sizing it according to that and keeping in mind, in California, they can get away with a little bit smaller because they've got the, the spritz showers out there. They're like 1.7 gallons per minute yeah. that you kind of walk through. Yeah. So making sure, you know, when you get to a 65, you can add a couple more and an 80, which is actually what I have in my house because when the grandkids come and my daughters come home for Christmas, I need the capacity of an 80 gallon and I don't run out. I just don't. Yeah. I like the idea of that larger tank. If I have the space to put it and then allow it to run on that heat pump mode at that high coefficient of performance as much as possible. Yeah. If you look at the 80 gallon tank at $191 a year, that's it. $191 a year. If you look at the energy guide that might be on your old 80 gallon uh, heat pump water, I'm sorry, standard electric tank, uh, it's going to be probably in that six to seven hundred dollars a year operating cost, much more. Man, that is very, very interesting. You know, uh, Liliana made a comment a while ago about being American strong. And as you had pointed out, it's the only heat pump water heater manufactured in the United States, actually manufactured just north of me in Michigan. And I've got a short video, just um, just an aerial video of that facility outside and in. I'm going to go ahead and play that real quick while we've got an opportunity. Yeah, very interesting facility. I'm looking forward to a road show for this one sometime. I love visiting my manufacturing facilities and uh, hopefully sometime we can work that out. There's a lot of people still in the chat. Uh, Todd, <laughs> Todd, we could have saved that one for a dad joke. Let me, let me, all right. Why did the heat pump water heater apply for a job? Anybody, anybody? because it wanted to heat up its career and prove it's the hottest thing in the business. <laughs> that plant looks so different than when I started just seven and a half years ago. The size is huge. That, that whole section you saw at the left with those blue panels on there, yep. that's part of our research and development, new labs that were completely created on the other side. You know, they moved the plant from GE, bringing the heat pump and did something that was pretty miraculous. We took an entire plant apart at GE, that whole product line, and in less than a year, had it up and running and turned it into a two-story production. Nice. So that it's got an ultra clean area. It's the best part of the plant when you walk in and you see where the heat pump water heaters are made. But yeah, so right and beautiful in the video. I, I'm looking yeah. forward to that. That's a uh, photography opportunity waiting to happen right there. We need to get you guys to come out and uh, do a plant tour with me. Mm -hmm. I would absolutely love that. So plenty of opportunity for anyone who has any questions or comments while we've got the man right here with us, Greg Holiday from Bradford White. Ty, have you got any questions, comments, things that you would like to address while we're here? Well, yeah, here at my um, local little village, there's uh, only two places. Uh, there's a post office, there's a dollar store, and then there's a little cafe. And in this little cafe, uh, there was some guys talking and let me back up. 
I've been looking for a hot water uh, or a heat pump water heater in the city of San Angelo, which is, you know, 30 minutes away. And I haven't been able to find one. So I've contacted all my plumber friends and everybody says, nah, we don't have any of that stuff around here. But in a little cafe, I was uh, eating lunch at and I was checking out and the, some people there talking and they were saying, yeah, it actually takes heat from your garage and puts it into mm. the water. It's actually you can cool your garage and heat your water. It's like a window unit. And if imagine you feel the backside is putting that heat out, it puts that into the water. Isn't that great? And people are like, wow, where do you get one? So here in this little bitty, little bitty village, there was people talking about heat pump water heaters. One and then them. my plumber's friends in the town right over was like, oh, yeah, nobody's interested in that here. But here it was in these, you know, cowboy hats and, you know, cowboy. They were talking about heat pump water heaters. And Love that's it. a great idea. Let's take the heat out of the garage and put it in the water. And I just thought that was it was so difficult for me not to step into that conversation. I'm like, I, <laughs> boundaries, <laughs> boundaries. I, I really wanted to walk in and be like, yes, let me tell you about that. Uh, but it was just really neat that. You know, some of the mindsets in the city were like, oh, yeah, you don't need that stuff here. And then here was people not in the industry at all uh, saying, no, that was really a great idea. Why aren't we using this more? So I thought that was a pretty cool little um, story. It just happened on Tuesday. Monday or Tuesday. That is incredible. Yeah. I mean, most people think of it as being complicated. And I, I remind contractors, what do you think about tankless when it first came out? Right. Oh, complicated. And mindset. more expensive, mm -hmm. all of those typical things, but tankless doesn't pay for itself. This does. Very, very intriguing. Lots and lots of good stuff. This is such a good opportunity to learn about how our industry is changing. We're, we're grateful that Bradford White is stepping up to talk about this transition and to start getting us familiar with servicing and repairing of heat pump water heaters because we keep hearing, you know, well, well these are disposable, these are disposable. And then in reality, now we're starting to go, well, no, not actually. Does, does Bradford White have like a little online training course or like a little online university? Mini university? For the Pro, our For the Pro is a university. And we actually do have classes where we bring contractors in through our distributors on site. We've got a separate building just a mile down the road uh, that is a theater seating training room where we've got our folks that do the conversations on the phone to help repair also step in and do teaching and training on everything we manufacture. I do webinars uh, specifically on this product. We also do service webinars because everybody says, well, we need to have our service team trained. And I say, all right, if I teach you how to fix this today, and the typical time frame is before you see one that needs to be serviced is about eight months is what I hear from most contractors. What are you going to remember eight months from now about all of that technical training? And they're like, not much. Mm -hmm. So our approach is we'll do what you want to do. We will teach you that class. We will do it even through a webinar. We'll, we can do it through a local distributor and have a water heater brought in and somebody standing there with you while we walk you through that. Or we can help you with on the phone training where when you're actually standing there in front of it and you got your phone up to your head, put it in this, read the fault codes, how many fault codes, because this water heater is smart enough that something has to happen bad 10 times before it believes it's real. Mm, so a true. power, something that happens, a little jolt, a little quick brown out that occurs for a matter of a second or two might freak out other things in the house. And it says, all right, that's one occurrence. If it happens nine more times, and I'm going to put a fault code in the display that says something is wrong. So we help you learn all of that on the job right then, sending you the parts, walking you through that. You can go through our For the Pro Training Academy and learn about every product we make, but we do have a module on heat pump water heaters as well, where we go more in depth. And we always remind the contractors, the first thing you got to have is what? An ohm meter, because without that, you can't test much, much of anything uh, on any of these products. So making sure that you so, understand it, we put you through that test. Absolutely. Please tell me what the name of that university is called. Thank you. Thank you. Now that's good. There's a dad joke right there. I knew it was coming sooner or later. It had to be one at least. Ty is just slick with those. I'm telling you. Wait, wait till you're around him in person and you... Whew. Couple questions did come in. Great one, Robert. Yeah, we didn't actually say it. It was on one of the earlier slides. And Greg, on these particular ones at the moment, what refrigerant are we using in this? 134A, which is the same that's in the refrigerator in your kitchen. 
And I know you guys are saying, is that going to change? Yeah, eventually the DOE is going to say, but they're giving they're giving heat pump water heater manufacturers a little bit of a break right now yeah. because they've been asking us to add and change and do so much and other organizations as well. It's like, give us a chance to just make some, sell some and get them out in the market in mass. So that's when it does get required that it has to be changed. Every manufacturer will step up to the bar with whatever the latest, greatest, best refrigerant is. Absolutely. Another one from Paul. Paul, thanks for joining us today. So when we look at that heat pump, we've got a little bit of space on top of the tank that is going to be our refrigeration unit. How much space are we adding on that refrigeration unit itself if we're looking at doing a equipment replacement? The 50 gallon is 60 and a half inches tall. Hmm. So you can okay. stand and see over the top of it. The filter huh? lays right on the top. So if it needs to be clean, and that's the only point of maintenance is squeeze, squeeze two tabs wash it, shake it, put it back in. And it actually has an air monitor like HVAC that's a real flow rate calculation. Then you push the button to reset it once you've cleaned it. If too much sawdust gets in that filter and it gets down to one square, it says, I'm gonna turn the heat pump off because you're not cleaning my filter and it yep. will switch to electric and still beep and blink to get the homeowner's attention. The, 60, yep. the 80 gallon is the tallest, it's 70 inches tall. So. Oh, you know, you're you're looking at a product that uh, is going to be that one is going to be a little bit higher to be able to see over. Sure. Um, but and we need seven inches free space above it just for serviceability, just to be able to take the top off and to be able to do some things with that. Yeah, I love the fact of doing the temperature differential. I'm sure we're using the thermistors because we've got an electronic expansion valve. So we got a five volt DC operating control board, which means I've got obviously temperature thermistors and maybe transducer, but with those temperature thermistors, I can now measure temperature drop across the coil and go, hey, TD's getting out of hand, airflow must be out of hand. In, in the diagnostic mode, it actually will read the temperatures. So the first time somebody says, well, I don't have enough hot water, let's put it in the diagnostic mode. Yeah. We've got sensors at the bottom of the tank and the top of the tank. Let's see what those temperatures actually are right mm. now, because they don't lie. They, you know, they show you what's going on. So we've got an electronic expansion valve on this, kind of high tech for a heat pump water heater yeah. to be able to offer that and to be able to modulate that as well. This is a 12 year old technology for us. It's been around for a long time, tried and true, tested. It's the workhorse of the industry. I love it. I'm looking forward to seeing one myself. This is really the technology that we're transitioning to. That's why we wanted to spend some more time talking about what we're doing in the heat pump water sector. Because as we start introducing technology, as we start introducing thermistors and pressure transducers and electronic expansion valves and DC motors, and we start increasing the efficiency of these systems, it's really important to stay ahead of the game and to introduce these products into our training facilities ahead of time. So now is the time to be able to connect with our manufacturers like Bradford White to start getting the products in the classroom. We had Sonobio Aguilera on just a few weeks ago. He had a Bradford White in the classroom. You know, we're, we're actually bringing these in as components of the HVACR classroom as they should. I love being able to go out and meet with Sonobio and actually talk to some of the students while I was there. Uh, out for the flow show in California. That's We've got to teach and train younger folks to get into this industry because the trades are suffering with not enough people getting in. Um, I've got a good friend, Ryan Kiskadden, who actually wrote uh, some children's books for grandparents and parents to read to their child Treat. that talk about the trades being, and it's, it's a comic book style. Yep. I read it to my grandson. At the end, it had 10 questions on water heating. It's called when hmm. the when the water stopped and he had, had 10 questions, can you identify the water heater in this picture? He got all 10 of them right. Man, He's four that. years old, Look at four that. years old. And yeah. when I finished and I closed the book after he answered, I said, Poppy, can, can we read it again? Yes, we can. Well, he is releasing right now his second book, which is on the HVAC trade. It'll be available on Amazon as well, because we've got to normalize the fact that College is not always the route to go. Some of you guys in the trade are making far more and have some college educated chaps working for you. And we can fix our own broken things. 
Imagine that. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right. Well, Ty, anything you want to cover before we wrap it up? We're at that hour moment. This has really been a great conversation, and uh, I hate to hate to bring it to a wrap, but it's probably a good time to start winding her down. Yeah, I don't have anything else. It was, uh, it was a great show. Okay. Yeah, it was a great show. I really appreciate you guys very much. I thank all of you. Oh, one more time. What was the author of that? Todd was wanting to check on that again. Ryan, R-Y-A-N, Kiskaden, K-I-S-C-A-D-E-N. I should have had his slide in here. I normally have that as my last slide to say, let's promote getting younger people into the trades now. Absolutely. All right. Well, I think we're going to call it a wrap and we uh, look forward to seeing you all again next week on the show as we continue to dive into all of these topics. We bring you the top educators of the industry and we prepare you for a successful career. We want to see all of you at the National HVACR Education Conference. It'll be in March in Las Vegas again. It's going to be a great time and we look forward to seeing you all then. Have a good night, everybody.